Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Time for our first Who Should You Choose of 2021. I hope you guys had a great new year. And if you didn't watch my last video, you can now use code no sleeves at King's Coast to order the best coffee possible. And get 10% off. All right. <laughs> now that's out of the way, boys. Let's get into the first episode of 2021 of Who Should You Choose. Again, this is a couple days old. I apologize. The last few weeks have been brutal in terms of like holiday and whatnot. I've been enjoying the time with my wife. Let's get into the questions. All right. SNC seems all but point all right. Seems all but pointless to ask you a team build question as team of the year Friday will literally change everything. So I'll ask another question. Okay. All right, I like it. If team of the year is like last year, if I remember correctly, where are all the nominees released at like eighty five overall for the first week? Would it be wiser to just save all my packs until the actual winners are announced to try and pull the actual team of the year player or make the or make the sets then? Or better to try and grab some eighty fives and hope for the best. So if uh, you guys are new, you won't really understand this, but last year, we Team of the Year changed drastically. It happened, well, now, uh, as opposed to at the end of a season in the NHL and the prior NHL games. So Team of the Year, uh, this year, it doesn't look like it's going to have nominee cards. Last year, there was every single nominee got a card, and then that card turned into uh, the Team of the Year upgrade player. I think that it's going to act a lot like the Fantasy Hockey event, where we just get the six master items uh, and then we go from there. So there, what I would recommend, just save your packs until Friday at 5 if you have. And if you are, were patient enough, that is the best way to try and pull one. Obviously, the odds are super stacked against you. But give yourself a shot, especially if you're a free-to-play player. Um, just wait until 5 p.m. today. We will get the uh, sets. And then um, you'll be able to see what cards are there. First from Evan Dyer. <laughs> Will Silver Icons come out in batches or all at once? So it will be batches. If you played last year, this is what happened with the gold cards. So what they did was instead of just dumping, because you have to think, if they dump 63 Icons into Silver Icons, the market is done. That is such a hit to the market that basically every card, like gold cards would end up costing you like 2,000 coins each. Um, and then you, because everyone would just be trying to make icon collectibles and whatnot to try and get these cards, it just shatters the market. It also makes all of the lower icons that get the silver upgrade useless because as of right now, let's just play it out. What, what are the cards that you see on everyone's team? Mario Lemieux, if you're smart, um, or if, you know... <laughs> If you're, okay, again, if you're trying to be the most competitive possible, Mario Lemieux, Guy Lafleur, uh, Gretzky, and then there's some smattering of like Paul Coffey, and then obviously your other favorites that you know that are among the among the Joe Sackick, for example. So if they release all of the master icons, the silver ones, then all we're gonna get is those cards, just the upgraded ones. No one's gonna go out and buy and actually use the lower ones because they're deemed it useless. So releasing them in batches is actually kind of smart. What it also does. Again, I get to see in the background of like how things are done a little bit more as a game changer. So I, I like to try and bridge the gap so you guys understand a little bit more. They can't release amazing cards every single day because if they did that, then that lowers the value of the cards they released the prior day. So whenever there's like a slow day, well, now prime times are going to be a little bit different. If you guys have not played the game before, prime times are actually what they do when a player has a significant night in the real NHL. They get a prime time the next day since there's been no real NHL. Prime times have been basically a formula of like, okay, these players are going to succeed and probably get X amount of prime times or upgrades. So we should release them randomly and that kind of thing. Or if there was like a signing or like something on social media, they give them a prime time. Chara just got one, for example, for signing in Washington. Again, I wouldn't use that card. He's just too slow. Um, but yeah, so the, with the prime times now coming out that are, you know, NHL based, that being said, they aren't always exciting. So like on a random, let's say Tuesday, because Tuesday is usually the slowest day, um, you know, they could release a, a couple of silver icons so that there's, you know, some buzz, you know what I mean? So that they give us something. Or on Thursdays, which was what it ended up being last year, they'd release like five or six um, on the Thursday because that's just what ended up, I don't know why, but that ended up being like alumni day. Um, but yeah, like, I, I again, I think that that's a smart way to do it. Again, it saves the market and it gives us excitement all the way through for the lower cards, so. This guy, Ricky LaFleur, says, frig off. All right. Nicholas Gaunt, I picked up 80, 88 Vasilevsky December 29th evening for 48K. There will be a Team of the Year cards coming. Will that card be used into the sets? And if so, how valuable is that card to use him for a set, or do I just resell him immediately? Or wait for Team of the Year for his value to spike higher so I can sell him at a higher price? I sort of want 88 winner national price for two Swarm. Also, so not sure if doing the goalie Team of the Year is what I want to do. Here is his team. Okay, also have Fantasy USA Wolf, 
Also, can you pick out any players on my team that have significant drop in price that I should sell before the team of the year event? Any update? Edit. I put up the AD Vazelad for auction 150 and it sold. <laughs> okay, so what I was going to say is you should probably sell it now because there's no guarantee. I'm Well, actually, yes, there is a guarantee. It will be Vasilevsky. So Vasilevsky, there is a chance, though, that that card is not used or... Here's the thing. When they do cards, okay, when they do cards like master items that help lower the cost to create that card. So um, I'll use this one as an example, okay? If Leon Dreisaitl wins the team of the year for center, his 89 winner national card will probably be what the card it is to use. Now, that might only knock his gold collectibles down by like three. So that's 150K in value. I would almost be willing to bet that that 88, that sorry that 88 Vasilevsky prime time if that is used okay let's play that out Vasilevsky will be the team of the year goaltender I'm almost positive on that um I mean the, the savvy people know uh but Vasilevsky's 88 prime time I don't think that's going to be worth three gold collectibles to knock off his price maybe two so that's 100k so you just saved yourself 50k by selling him for more that that's a smart play in my opinion the other ones, it's very difficult to gauge, but I doubt that the 88 primetime Vasilevsky would dock off three gold collectibles off the cost. I just don't think that would be the play. Maybe, but I, I doubt it. And if it is, it's probably three, and that's 150. So, um, Any cards that you should sell before the event? So you're running out of time, but um, 90 OV probably. Ah. I would sell that 90 OV. And 87, McDavid, he's going to drop in. Pro Actually, no, there's no point in that. That's a good value. Um, Be careful with the Russian. So, Daniil Cheka, and, and I guess I guess this is a good time to talk about World Juniors. So, I bought Bohm Byram for 150,000 coins just because, A, I'm a Canadian, and I love watching the World Juniors, so it gives me an added bonus to watching the World Juniors. 150k, I like that price because he is almost guaranteed to play for the gold medal. So even if he gets a plus three, that's fine. Uh, I'm okay with, that, especially with that if they did to Finland. Like they're this might be one of the better Canadian teams like of all time. Um, so that being said, I'm fairly confident that he is going to get his 90. And at 150k, I think he's probably going to sell for like. 200 to 250 because his synergies don't appear to be changing so he's got wingman which is cool but like that's it like it's not going to duplicate or anything like that he's not going to get a team-based synergy so i think i think his value is kind of capped and i think that's what's going to happen so many people have bought in like five bow and byrams or kirby docks for whatever amount and they're going to think that they're going to make hundreds of thousands of coins but you have to understand the amount of people that have the exact same idea as that is going to flood the market like, when you try to sell a card, guys, um, you know, the more that are there, the less you're going to get for it, obviously. Think how many people bought the Kirby Doc with the intention of not to use him. Again, the endurance just, in my opinion, kills the card entirely. With the intention to just sell him. The second that he makes the gold medal game or wins gold, for example, his card's going to skyrocket, but then 50 of the Kirby Docs are going to go on the market, and they're all just going to undercut each other. Um, so you have to be careful. The one card, uh, the cards that I would, you know... Sweden, man. I said this. I did not have a good feeling about Sweden. I just think they were under man. They got sick uh, with COVID and whatnot, and it just it just seemed like the odds were stacked against them in their division. And then obviously, I said that I really liked Russia, and you know, Russia struggled against Czech. Everyone just assumed that they were done, but they don't realize that Russians, for whatever reason, just always struggle against the Czech in the World Juniors. Um, they beat Sweden, and then the USA dominated them. And now it's like. Okay, they their reward for doing well at the beginning of the tournament is they get to play Finland. So that's a risk. The one thing I will say is that if Broberg drops enough, because if they can, I, I just if they get by Finland, they'll probably they'll be playing they'll they'll play for a you know a, a medal. Um, and I like their chances to get bronze. It's just I don't know, man. Like there is a point at which Broberg is just a very good card. He is with Howitzer. I think he's a great defenseman, especially for free to play. 50K, I'm almost tempted to just go out and buy him a little bit less than that. Maybe he'll probably drop. Um, but watch out for like, so Wolf and all the World Junior cards, guys. The only one I think that has a, you know, Abramov is another really good one um, that'll probably spike. What I would recommend though, guys, 
is their speed is not going to go up by 5. It's going to go up by 2.5. I know I said that earlier in the video, and that's just because I'm dumb. But <laughs> if you think about that, go and look at comparables on the market of those cards, right? And the fact that there is so many that are going to hit the market like, I don't think you're going to make a ton of coins on them, and I think the time to get out is before they get the upgrade. Like, for example, a rookie's value is never higher than his first game. Okay, so a highly touted rookie, Alex de Lafreniere going into the year. Let's say he has a fantasy card coming out. His fantasy or his value is never higher than the first before the first game that he plays because unless he actually lives up to his potential, which is extremely difficult to do, and I'm talking like point-per-game play, point per game player you're not receiving the full value of what you're spending right so it's the same thing with these world junior cards you're paying a premium for hope right when you could just pay you know get out by making a lot of coins and you know getting out at the right time I, if russia and canada play in the finals i again i'm just i'm not looking at the standings right now so i can't even remember if that's possible but let's say canada is almost assured to be in the finals okay and that would be one of the biggest chokes ever in the world juniors so Wait until next round, and I guarantee you that Bone Byram's cost or value is what you what you actually have to spend for him will go up because now he is playing for a medal. So obviously he's, he's guaranteed an upgrade. His value will go up. But there is a point at which everyone's going to be like, oh my God, I want this car because he's going to get a 90 and he's almost guaranteed it. I got to get it. And then when he actually gets it, it's like, oh, everyone has this card. It's not as good as I thought. Uh, I'm not going to get as much. Just keep that in mind. I know that was a really long-winded thing about the World Junior Cards, but it was something I was thinking about. I was going to make a video on it myself, but um, regardless, just something I want to keep in mind. Like, if you are storing a ton of World Junior Cards, if they're Russian or if they're Canadian that you have, wait until they win their next games because they're all guaranteed, like 95%, right? And then their value is up even more, and then you can get out when you have the risk and give all the risk to other people and not really lose yourself that many coins, probably make some. So, anyways, Cam Code Sleeves, thanks for the advice, man. I know this is objective based on how good your defense is, but who, in your opinion, is the best goalie? Have a great day, my dude. I have not used him, but the amount of people that... I, at first, I thought I was getting trolled, but the amount of people that have come to my chat and told me that the winner national, Dave Riddick, is literally the best goaltender they've used, is just painful to me. If you have been following my channel for more than a year, you know that last year I recommended everyone go and get the choose the the Rene for Christmas because if you can get a goal a goaltender that's high end that you can just use and not have to worry about goalie, then that's fine. As whereas all the forwards and defensemen, eventually they'll lose their value and you'll have to replace them. So this year I was like, no, there's no way. Here's the thing about Riddick, and I'm curious to see what happens with the team of the year goaltender as well. If you notice, at six foot and above. Stats will get capped, okay? So I believe speed is one, recovery is one, I think positioning is one. They get capped. For example, base Ben Bishop, because he's a tree at six foot seven or whatever, he is capped at 78 on those stats. So at a certain point, his size is actually a detriment because all those other stats, he's going to get picked apart by lateral movements, things like that. There will come a point at which Ben Bishop cards are just not, they're just not very good. Just like like as opposed to last year, where it's just whoever's biggest. So the thing is, is that the meta seems to be in between six foot and six foot three because that's where the cap is not nearly as high as someone who's taller. Dave Riddick is six foot four. If you go and look at his stats, it appears though his stats are not capped, which means that he is a six foot four goaltender taking advantage of the fact that he's big and getting all of the benefits of having high attributes. Attributes matter for goaltender guys. Frame. This is directly from the developer. A glove high stat that is higher than another goaltender's glove high stat dictates how fast, frame by frame, they will move their glove to make glove high saves. Okay, so it is important. I just want to get that out there. Is that watch for special release goaltenders because if they don't have caps, they could be better. Now uh, I'll say this: the goaltenders that I've used personally, I loved Linus Allmark. Um, I thought he was really, really good when I had him. Bobrovsky, the ninety-two, was a joke my first fifteen, twenty games, but uh, that was all in my head. I think he plays great now. A high, a high-rated goaltender will play good. There's very few that are just uniformly, like universally bad that people are just like, no, stay away from this goaltender. But those are the high-end ones that are really like, I don't get to try out the lower-rated ones, guys, very much because a, I don't, I refuse to waste money on a goaltender because I know that I'm. A, decent player and that my defense dictates it 
Um, my, so my free to play team, I just use base, um, Bobrovsky. I don't care. Uh, on my pay to play team though, I'm like, I want to have the biggest swag team, right? So I go out and get whoever's the highest rated and best. And so I, I don't get the tryout. That's why I rely on you guys to give me feedback on goaltenders. Goddamn David Riddick. Pasternak says, here's his hut team. The Sherbets are howitzer shut down speedster activate. Should I go for Gretzky next or save for the next events upgrading my silvers icons to silver? Can collect two collectibles per week or coins really right now? All untradeable except Matthews. Okay. Let's have I'm sorry that I'm not getting to a lot of questions, guys, because a lot of these questions are super important that I want to, you know, get across to you. So the Gretzky, the Gretzky debate now, guys. So all year long, I have said go get Mario Lemieux, then go get Gretzky. The problem is, is that if you didn't get the 91 Gretzky and you're going to make the 89 Gretzky, there is a lot of left-handed cards that are just as good or better, okay? Like, he is still one of the top four, even just the 89, but the cost to get him is so high, and when you consider the fact that Team of the Year is out, any new event that's out, you can't then go out and get that because it's going to cost you so much to make Gretzky. Looking at your team, you have Pedersen, McDavid, and Morenz on your left side with Lin- Lindblom. So Morenz, I think Morenz is one of the best silver icons to upgrade. His card is so nasty already at 86. Um, when he gets his upgrade, it's going to be he's going to be the left-handed Gila Fleur, just not as good defensively because he's so small. It's just so hard to defend him. Like when I I don't have him anymore because again I just I try and have the best team I can possibly have. When I play against Ty Morenz cards, it's so annoying because he's so hard to hit when he gets going in the defensive zone that it's just, it's frustrating. So when his card gets upgraded, that's great. So consider that card a keep because you're going to you're gonna use him for a while. As with Lafleur, as with Mario, as with Sakic, and Sundin. Sundin's going to be a low-key, really good one as well when he gets his silver upgrade. And you have Coffee. At this point, no. Don't go get Gretzky because remember, his synergies are just a a prison like you can't <laughs> i call it the synergy gulag when you're like when you're, you're just stuck and you can't do anything gretzky is usually the reason why you can't get a other sin activated he is still an amazing card the 91 is still one of the best left-handed cards that you can get but if you're spending that much investment on it now i would rather have a team of the year card but remember that at some point when there is an event that is not very good or something like that or better yet, wait for your milestones. So everyone forgets that, you know, the milestones that come out at the beginning of the year, you should be, if you played since launch, you should be getting close to like the 2000 goals or the, you know, um, the shots on goal, things like that. You're going to get a ton. Now, if you get it right now, like I did, I would get gold collectibles so you can make TV of the year. However, those are a nice burn spot to get Gretzky because you're guaranteeing yourself Gretzky, you know, and those are untradeable that you get for just doing the doing the objectives. That might be the, what I would recommend for anyone that's still playing the game that has since launch, even if you haven't been playing it like every single day. At some point in the next month or two, you're probably going to get enough to make Gretzky, and you know that you're going to get him with that set. So I wouldn't make Gretzky with your team, man. Um, I would save up your save up your stuff. Love the vids, thank you, my dude. Ace sleeves. Uh, Jacob says, great content. Keep up the work. Hope you can help me out with my team. I have two GC, seventy k, and buyer on my bench for resell. Thanks. All right, he's got Lemieux, Gretzky, McDavid, Nylander, Couturier, Radulov, Zabinijad, Kopitar, Daze. Okay, so he's got a good base free to play team. Carlson, Hedman, Boychuk, Wierenski, and then Hamilton, Riley. Okay, so he's got two GCs. Save the two GCs for the event, man. I know that you know two GCs is probably not going to get you a team of the year, but just don't spend it now. Just just wait. 70K and buy them on my bench. I would, like I said, not spend the 70K. Just wait because any of the cards that you're going to buy for 70K are going to be marginal upgrades over what you've got. Um, and then you've got Byram on the bench. Wait until buy. Actually, you know what? In your situation, I'd probably hold on to Byram because he's when he gets his ninety, he's going to be your best left-handed defenseman. Keep Byram. I don't know if I would resell him. Um, there will be a point at which he's worth it. Byram is, in my opinion, the only card that I think is worth it. Now that Broberg probably isn't going to win a medal um, or a gold or silver, it's probably you know among defensemen, it's Byram, and then probably. Uh, uh oh my god i'm drawing a blank abramov okay, i'm drawing a blank the, the russian forward hey sleeves yo no to game what's up sleeves hope all is good yes sir b mill says okay hey sleeves wondering what my next step should be i have 20k one icon zero gc's looking to get radulov and halloween latang do i do 86 set for a defenseman work on brick bowser or replace passa or work towards lafleur have howitzer speeds your distributor Okay, so if you are a free-to-play player and you have no chance of getting a team of the week or team of the year player, which is what it seems that B. Mills is the situation that he's in, um, 
I would not work towards any of the 86s because if you don't get an 86, you've wasted two, or the one you want, you're wasting two icon collectibles, and then you're going to need a bunch to upgrade them anyways. So I don't know if I would do that. Um, you have 1K, one icon collectible. Should I save for LeFleur? Mm, you have Gretzky and Mario. Yes, I would save for LeFleur. Le guys... It's tough because if you, I've seen horror stories that people have done it three times and not gotten LeFleur. You have an 80% chance of getting him in a set. He is the best right-handed winger in the game outside of Mario, and the only reason Mario is slightly above him is because A, he's bigger, and he has the most ridiculous synergy combo that you can get. Guy LeFleur is the prototype winger, to, winger in this game. Like, fast, decent size, epic wrist shot. That's it. Like, that, he, that is it. You should try for him. I recommend trying once at most twice. But that is what I would work towards next. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for today. Sorry I didn't get to a lot of questions in this video. There was a lot of really good ones. And I think that going forward, um, I try to just bang out all the questions. But if they bring up a good topic, I kind of want to sit and discuss it. Because, again, I think that helps the greater good as opposed to going through all the teams and then, you know, just kind of skimming over. And then the play other people that aren't getting their question answered, they're not really getting anything out of it. So let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And, uh, again, the videos will be Monday through Friday now. Um, as they were prior to the last two weeks. So don't forget that when you do these videos, or so today I will answer these questions on Monday, so keep that in mind, guys. But catch my stream today. I will help you with all of the team of the year. We're going to have a long team of the year stream, 12 p.m. Eastern time till about 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern time on my stream. Titles down below. I'll see you guys there.